start in verse 16. So 13, verse 16. Also, it causes all, both small and great, both rich and poor, both free and slave, to be marked on the right hand or the forehead, so that no one can buy or sell unless he has the mark, that is, the name of the beast or the number of its name. This calls for wisdom. Let the one who understanding calculate the number of the beast, for it is the number of a man, is number 666. So this specifically says, be marked on the right hand or the forehead. Chip is implanted very back behind your ear. They can't get it in your forehead because your forehead is actually the thickest part of your skull. They can't really drill through that to get to your frontal cortex. Um, right hand, well, if it's in your right hand, then it's not really linked to your brain. Or at least they haven't come up with that yet where they can stick a chip in your right hand and somehow it links to your neurons in your brain. So this is very specific about the side of the mark of the beast. Right now, mm -hmm. the chip is here. That's not where the mark of the beast is being planted. Elon Musk, friend or foe, who knows, but he successfully implanted a chip in its first human test subject with his company Neuralink. His first product will be called telepathy and will allow the user to connect electronically with um, devices based on eye motion and soon just thinking about it. So the future goals, of course, would also be um, to use his device to like restore uh, use to limbs and organ functionality, et cetera. All these things sound like a sci-fi movie. But my question is, is this greater impact going to be for good or for evil? Uh, actually, I want to start with Tyler's scoop on this one. It's evil. It's terrible. It's, it's the end of the world as we know it. This is the rise of the machines, guys. Oh no, that's that's too far. All right. But I do think that this is a, a inc an incredibly dangerous move for humanity. Uh, first, I think it's a huge nod in the direction of playing God. If you augment the human condition to where you can have control over basic human functions, I think that we've shown so many times that power is abused, constantly power is abused. And I think that this is no exception to that. This is such a huge danger that it will be used that way. I think that it can do a lot of good too. And I, I think that it's easy to make the case that Elon Musk is a, a foreseeing man. He sees where humanity can go and he, he brings us closer to the future, right? With everything, it's, it's always just progress. And uh, I'm excited to see what he does with X uh, with the future of X, I love that it was ripped away from the controls that were were put there because I hated Twitter. I hated what Twitter was doing, uh, and I was happy to see that Elon Musk was he was going to make a change. The better or worse of that change is, I guess, remains to be seen. I, I will say that he has cleared the den, cleared the den of the vipers, and whether it gets better or worse from here. At least we can say he's done that. Tesla overall, I think it's been it's been successful. Um, is it better or worse for humanity? I don't know. Uh, his what SpaceX I think is his uh, outer space exploration company. Cool. Uh, I don't know or care about it. This is where the rubber meets the road to see his ethics in practice. And regardless of how I feel about it, I feel not good about it. That's my feelings. I feel that it is incredibly dangerous and there's a huge potential upside that is not going to be realized because it's all, this is more potential controls and the powers that be all of our governments worldwide, they want power. That's, that's what a government does. That's how a government functions is by controlling power and this is a huge lever to control power over people for basic function i don't know if you guys ever saw that tv show upload or the feed uh both of them are right in line with this and i think that it's it's not good because i do think that we're going to a place where it's it's too hard to trust elon musk is 
I, I can't think of the a visionary, right? He's a visionary. That's the word. But the more things he acquires, the more dangerous it seems because it's too much power in the hands of one person. Just like with our last question, the United States has got too much power. What happens when Musk goes dark or what happens when the the power of even just one of these projects is put into the hands of someone who is a monster. It, it's devastating. And I think this nowhere more than anywhere else, because anything invasive into the body is the greatest invasion of your privacy, right? It, it, any drawing of your blood, there's, there's laws to protect the drawing of your blood without consent because it's the greatest invasion of your privacy. The greatest invasion beyond that is your mind, and here it comes. So I think that this is not a good thing. I think that we're playing God by this, and what's to say that we can't modify the human condition to prevent aging? I I think that that's, that's in line, that's coming. And everything's just logical it always seems like oh this is the next step this is the next step that's how we get to terminator that's how we get to the place where we're so out of line with the reality that we know that we don't see our own destruction bringing bringing hell down on us i think absolutely it's not a good thing one more follow-up question do you think in regards to Christian eschatology, do you think this plays into any of the storylines at all? It's easy to make the case. Yeah, it's 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 easy to make the case for it to say um, people will give themselves over to the great prostitute. The great prostitute is progress in this. Um, I think it's it's also another easy case to say that this is this is the final sort of mark of the beast because that is completely removing the need for God from your life because if it goes as far as I would see it going, why do you need God? You are God at that point. We have become God, capable of granting ourselves full healing, uh, new body part, body part replacement. Um, downloading our personality and not only our personality, but our memories and our identities. It all just seems natural. It's it upload us into the, the communal neural link. What's the point of God anymore when we've become God, we've usurped God to the ultimate degree. Okay. I, I wrestle. Oh, go ahead. Go I, ahead. I I I I I echo a lot of what Tyler's saying, but I do want to push back a little bit. Um, pros and cons. My my pro. Well, let's do cons first because that's actually easier. I do not. I, I do. There's a wonderful podcast series called Darknet Diaries, and it's about cybersecurity and the flaws and the whether from hackers or defenders. Um, red or blue team, um, there's already an issue with how secure our online world is and our devices. I worry at the the extent of you are now putting something that can connect to the internet in your head. What are the likelihoods of that being hacked or intruded? Um, I, I, I'll, probably call, I'll call it out now and one day I'll probably be proven right. What happens the day when someone hacks your your arm that's a prosthetic that's controlled by a chip in your brain and you commit murder? Who's at fault? And how do you prove that you didn't intend to murder someone? Same with the self-driving car that hits a pedestrian. Who's at fault? The car or the person behind the wheel? That actually um, just happened, so by the way. Yeah, I know I did. Uh, so, like, those questions are already being posed, uh, one. And then, two, the pros side of it is people who served in our military or born, people that were born with a defect now having the ability of getting a prosthetic that allows them to move and to be able to, to function as a normal person. My pushback on Tyler on that part would be then you were stating that it was God's design for people to be like that to be 
born like that. So you're saying that God, that means that we, God's design, I think, was to have a perfect world without disease, illness, and sickness. And because we live in a fallen, broken world, that is a consequence. We have now lived with disease, sickness, and the people being born disformed. That is not God's design for them to be born deformed. God's design for them was to be born and to be perfect, but we live in a fallen, broken world. So I, I don't I wouldn't argue that changing that is not living up to God's design or purpose. I think God's design and purpose was you and I, people who have full functioning ability to move. I think God place the God places um not places, but I think we are born with thorns in our sides that some people wrestle with. And some people like I like, we, like in that sense, disabilities is kind of similar to skin tone. We're born, they're born with it. They ain't never control. And God's design is not for all people to be white or all people to be black. I think it's just a byproduct of our fallen nature and it's our babble of us being dispersed. But um, I, 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 I would love for the ability for someone to experience full use of their hands if they have never been born with hands. God's, I think God's design was for them to have two working hands. That was the original tech, but because we live in a fallen world, they were born without it. And to give that person that ability to get that back would be great because what we do with our hands can either glorify God or curse him, like same with our mouths. And so I long for people who never, who didn't have not been living to the full potential of what their body God designed bodies to be like, to have that experience would be great. The question I pose is, like I said before, the con is way greater. I don't know if that's safe to put a chip in your brain. Like, I don't think that's safe. I like you, I'm pretty confident Tyler wouldn't say prosthetics are going against God's design. Like it's blasphemy. We are now controlling the body. God designed you to be born without hands. That is his will. I don't think that's what you're saying, but it is coming off that way slightly. I I know that's not your intent. Um, Sorry, it wasn't yeah. my intent. No, 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 but that's what it could sound like in some sense. But I get what you're saying. Like right now, the Apple Vision Pro is disconnecting people from reality while being immersed in reality. And that's already mind blowing. Um, the videos of people going to up to order me, like someone sitting there in the, with the goggles on and moving their hands, and they're experiencing. They're seeing everything around them, but they're experiencing totally they're disconnected while somehow being connected. That's already dangerous enough. But now put the chip in their head and you don't even know that there's a barrier that they're disconnected is a little bit more way more dangerous. And so um I'm I'm hesitant. I'm excited at the if they can keep this without connecting to the internet and you're only controlling a prosthetic, great. But the moment it goes online is the moment it becomes very dangerous for the user and those around it. Because there is an opportunity for someone with malice intent to do something harmful. Like I, as a diabetic, I don't, I think goodness I'm a type two and it's controlled with a diet and exercise. But for like type one diabetics who have an insulin pump that connects, that's Bluetooth and Wi-Fi enabled, someone can hack in and give them an overdose and they could die. Like that's a, that's a legit, that should be a legit fear for people. Um, for their lives because they're connected to the internet. It's very dangerous. And so same with uh, anything that's controlling the, no- the helps with the normal rhythm of your body, it, it becomes more of a, a danger than a, so that's why I'm a little bit hesitant on a chip in your brain. And then there's the ethical question that I think we need to go down uh, of like body modifications. What if someone who doesn't have any limbs missing or any need for this? but just wants to modify their, themselves and put the chip in just so that they can have access to the internet. Should we allow that? Should the neural Hold on. sell that? Mm-hmm. Are you saying that it's not okay for someone to be different than they were originally intended? No, like a boy no. who wants to be a girl? Oh, I am saying, I guess that genetics is genetics, but... Isn't that the same that, as like, this? Similar, We like for instance, cloning is possible, but we as a society said no. Like we cloned a sheep, genetically similar to its its predecessor, but we said, "Heck no, you cannot do this research on people." Do I know if there's research being done right now? Are people cloning? I have no idea, but we put a restriction on it. Why? We saw the dangers of society. Why can't we see the same with? If you do not have a medical reason to use a prosthetic for a chip to be able to control it, should you not be allowed to not get it at all? I would say yes, but I don't know. Just narrowing. 
I have a desire for this to be an open market product. Should, should we tell Elon, don't do it? But yeah. Okay. That's my two cents. For sale. For sale. Wow, there's a lot to unpack with this. I think Tyler Nosman did a lot of it justice. I mean, so I'll just start with simply saying anything that you have to stick in your body that's foreign isn't good for your body. I mean, that's that's just, it should be common sense. If you need to stick something in your body that is a foreign object, probably not healthy for your body. But um, just to kind of go off of what Osman was saying, there are a lot of good potential with the Neuralink. Um, someone who uh, is born blind, um, there's research into this that could actually help restore their eyesight. Someone who's dealing with um, paraplegic or even a quadriplegic might be able to not only have function of their limbs, but there's, you know, if that doesn't happen, they can at least, you know, use a chip in their brain to move a machine that actually moves the their limbs for them without them having to, you know, physically activate the nerves in their muscles to move the machine. They can just think and the machine moves. Therefore, they're still getting that exercise for their limbs, even though they may be a quadriplegic or a paraplegic. Um, the thought of using this chip to regrow limbs, that might be something a little bit more further down the road once this technology is kind of perfected. But yeah, some uh, soldier from war who steps on an IED and gets her leg blown off, possibility of... Uh, regrowing their limb how do you <laughs> how do you tell somebody no uh, because of something like that but you do also get to the ethical side of it and yes I mean it's pretty well documented that Elon Musk went through a lot to cover up a lot of the test subjects um, animal test subjects that died either due to the surgery or the after effects after the surgery. Um, there, it's pretty well documented. He went through a lot of ways to get that covered up because there was a lot of test subjects that had adverse effects and ended up dying. And I think um, right now they're still in the testing phase of this. And there are uh, a link that you can go and you know apply to be a test subject and I'm not thinking once it comes, the idea is they want to bring it to market. And I think they're having the price tag right now. I think I looked it up and it was like uh, $10,500 um, price tag for having this surgery and all that. And I think the battery only lasts about six hours. And then they have like a special cap that you put on and it helps recharge that battery. Um, so there's a lot of ethical things to it. When you think about it, it's human beings have a way of making and inventing things for the good of mankind. <clears throat> but unfortunately, those things don't stay good. Everything from, um, I don't, don't know if you guys seen Oppenheimer, but the invention of like the nuclear bomb meant as good, meant as a deterrent. But now there's always a fear of what if a terrorist organization gets a hold of a nuclear warhead. You no, know, the amount of lives that can be destroyed if it gets into the wrong hands. Uh, surrogacy, I'm actually surprised that's not a topic we're talking about. But uh, 30 years ago, the idea of um, a woman who couldn't get pregnant by natural means, um, being able to conceive and have a baby was so far-fetched. And now <laughs> it's only not only possible but we've come to the place where I know specifically in China where they can modify the genetic code and almost pop out a designer baby. Uh, now getting to the point where you can have, instead of having just the mom and dad, you can have two dads and a mom. You can have the genetic material of three, four, five different people all placed into an embryo. That gets into some really ethical dangerous territory. And I think it's the same with this 
chip that we're putting into now. You know, who's to say that uh, someone who has this chip and goes out and commits a murder, you know, who's to say they can't use a legal defense of it was the chip? The chip told me to do this. <clears throat> and how do you counter that? You no, know, you got a foreign object put into your brain. You don't know what signals it's sending because it's already reported. Like it takes measurements of your brain, your brain activity, what you're thinking, and all that's getting recorded and putting into a database. So the lack of privacy is already gone. You no, know, we worry about big, big brother turning on our webcams and looking at us while we're on our computers or listening to our phone calls. Now you got big brother who in essence, can see your thoughts. <laughs> so how do you how do you deal with that? You no, know, it you no, know, it's like Tyler was saying, it's a lot of power for one person to control, but I don't think we want the government to be able to control this as well. There are some things that are meant for good, but should never be brought forth to mankind, like cloning. Do I think that somewhere in some lab a human being hasn't been cloned? I I almost guarantee it. It's it's happened. <laughs> and it's just a matter of time before it gets out that it's happened. But at what point do we say there's some good in this, but because of the misuse of it, the evil that could come from it, we don't bring this before mankind. And I think this chip is one of those things where there could be a lot of good, but because of the amount of misuse that can happen, it's just not worth it to bring before mankind. Mankind is not ready for the benefits as well as the horrors that could come from this, especially because mankind is sinful. No matter what good we invent, we will twist it and use it for evil because that's just our nature. Solid. Um, I think you guys hit all most of the arguments I was going to make, but uh, my answer is I believe its greater impact will be um, not for good. It'll be for evil. Um, it'll be misused. It'll be abused. I honestly, in my opinion, I think Elon Musk. I mean, more power to him. He's living life like the real life Iron Man. He's really, he's really living like a real Iron Man. He's a real Marvel character. And that's why I said friend or foe, I'm not sure. Because like when he purchased Twitter, just like Tyler said, that was actually the reason I returned to Twitter. I've been, I haven't used Twitter since SMSU, but when Elon purchased it, I, I was like, you know what? I'm back on Twitter I'm, or X now, as they call it. What he was doing with Tesla, how he made um, uh, the electric vehicle come off as like a luxury item to the consumer. Like he rebranded the whole idea of an electric vehicle and EVs are popular now, they're popping now. And Tesla is a success story. Um, SpaceX, awesome. But to bring it to Neuralink, like I said, I believe that transhumanism is the goal. And to be like God, that's something that we thought was only attained through power and resources, but now with a chip in your brain, you can almost claim that you are now omniscient. Imagine having access to a Google database 24 seven, and you can conjure results just by thinking of a question and instantaneously you have answers within a millisecond. Like this is a future I didn't think people would think would actually happen, but this is something that's right around the corner now. Um, the reason why I think it, it's a, abusive or will be abused is I think we're allowing a parasite into our brain and that parasite will be the US government because we all know how it's gonna play out. First is gonna be something you opt in, it's elective, you can choose it if you want to, but there's gonna be some natural disaster or some scare 9-11 type situation where now it's required. Now we have check-ins. Now government has to scan your body three times a day to check for diseases or fake, I don't want to say for the YouTube algorithm, but another uh, pandemic dash 19. 
Oh, we see a trace of it in your system, Osmond. Now you have to report to so and so location within 15 minutes, or your personal information, your credit cards will be suspended. We'll put a warrant out for your arrest because now you can possibly infect other people. Um, like ima imagine that kind of lifestyle. That's going to be worse than the Chinese social credit system. That's going to be worse than the caste system that that exists there. Because you can now be arrested for trumped up charges that you were unaware of. You can now be aware of things that are lying dormant in your body. You're considered a criminal because you didn't take the necessary steps to get that taken care of. Imagine trying to sleep and now they sold your information to marketers and now marketers are sending you advertisements at two, three, four o'clock in the morning. And every time an advert pops in your head, it beeps and you wake up and now you've gone crazy. They say, oh, he's just schizophrenic. It had nothing to do with the chip. How do you how do you argue against that? How do you bring claim and arguments against a company that's force feeding you information in your head at all times? That's the biggest psyop that I could ever think of, because when the pandemic happened and people were speaking out against the in the the jab, let me say, you had the entire power, resources, money, and influence of the U.S. federal government arguing against a doctor that lives in rural Oklahoma. That's not a battle you can win. And now imagine the battle you have to go against with a chip in your head. Um, I just also think it's just going to be, overall, we're no longer going to be the same entity. Um, we're, we're no longer going to be on a spiritual basis. We're no longer going to be the same spiritual beings that were designed to be that exist in relationship with God. Um, uh, Tyler, you alluded to that. Um, I think that relationship will be severed uh, because our God is going to be information and then also our fake information community or a network of people that we can connect with and perform activities in some another i don't know another dimension maybe it's what's that facebook thing called where you can have an avatar in their world um whatever that universe was that they created i think that's going to replace our need for god um but at the end of the day, in terms of Christian eschatology, this I think this if it's not the mark of the beast, I definitely think this is going to be the blueprint for it. Um, obviously, there's going to be a lot of room for advancement to improve it, to make it more efficient. But I can see it holding your monetary um, information, your health records, and you won't be able to buy or sell one day without it, um, in my honest opinion. But that's that's my two cents on that. Any other follow-up questions in regards to that topic? I do say, or I will say, I, I I praise the creation of this. I think that just in regards of the creation, it's totally brilliant and it's got potential for amazing healing work. But you know, Osmond said, bring it online. It's a tremendous danger. And uh, I don't think there's any way to avoid that foresight says that that's progress you centralize everything if you centralize everything now you've got a greater degree of control and a smaller margin for error so i i think that all of our fears 100 percent founded because i think that absolutely it will go that way i don't know if it'll go or how soon it'll go and to what degree it'll go as far as you say james i think you've got the kind of the utmost end of it with that with it like it's it's this social control lever where it says uh, you have to adhere and abide by everything controlled here but i think there's there's a a dose of accuracy and truth in that if it's not 100 percent accurate i think that it's close so yeah i i think we're all against it and i would hope that any viewers would see the wisdom in caution extreme caution facts on facts I mean, elon is a true visionary yeah, he... uh google google glasses now glasses that all you have to do is say hey take a picture and they'll take a picture or they'll start filming talk about invasion of privacy you no know, if you don't want to be filmed someone can just film you with just your glasses and upload it to Facebook, Instagram, social media, whatever site or database they want to just by 
you know, looking at you, you know, how, how dangerous that is. Now, I'm not going to go as far and say getting a chip in your brain is the mark of the beast. I think, I mean, you had people saying that about, you know, the vaccine. So you're always going to get people that say the next thing is always the mark of the beast. This is the mark of the beast. Well, no. Um, now, if someone were to ask, hey, Chris, do you think Christians should get a chip put in their brain? And I'll say, you know, freedom in Christ, you can do it if you want to. If it doesn't violate your conviction, awesome. If you don't, awesome as well. I don't think it's sin to get a chip put in your brain per se. I personally would not, but I wouldn't call it sin if you want to get a microchip put in your brain. I think you're a little bit naive, but no, I wouldn't, from a Christian perspective, I, I'd say, you no. Know, with anything else, it's freedom in Christ, but you no, know, use, use some common sense as well when it comes to that kind of stuff. Let me let me let me actually push back a little bit on the the mark of the beast claim. <laughs> I was too. I was too. <laughs> yeah, let me push back on the mark of the beast claim, Chris. You are correct, but we have to understand that when it comes to the mark of the beast, it's not just the chip in and of itself. The mark of the beast has to do with the mark of the beast within the context of the beast system. The beast system is going to be what we know that one world government. Um, that's broken up into divisions, seven uh, seven kingdoms, seven kings. But the mark of the beast within the context of that beast system will be something that obviously we understand that we'll buy, we'll sell, we won't be able to trade without it. We won't be able to exist as a human citizen, a legalized citizen without. So to get the chip now, that's why I said to get it now will be elective. I don't think that's going to be the mark of the beast because now it's, you're free to do so or free not to do so. But there's going to come a day, like I said, where there's going to be some security concern where they're going to say, for your safety, we're going to need to do A, B, and C. And like I said, this might not be the mark of the beast, but I definitely think this will be the blueprint for it. This is definitely a rough draft. They're going to obviously perfect it to a degree. It's not going to be perfect because we know the scripture tells us that those who get the mark of the beast, they're going to have sores over the location of the mark. Um Maybe that's caused from some electric magnetic attack or whatever, whatever uh, conspiracy theory we can come up with. But so to get it now, I'm not saying that is the mark of the beast, but in conjunction with a beast system that will happen one day, it can very melt, very, very well be the technology that's used for it. Because let's 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 be real. I don't know if you guys look up right now. Elon Musk is leading the way on this chip, but China is also um, they have a tech company in China that's trying to create a rival chip because they heard everything Elon was doing in uh, the U.S. And they're like, we want to get ours to the market first. So I believe there's going to be an open open market competition to produce the best brain chip. They're going to they're going to perfect all the flaws. They're going to make it affordable, cheap, accessible. Create some sort of interface, um, online interface necessary to use it. Then. Most likely, out of that pool, the best one will be used in the system. But obviously, we'll see when that day comes. Yeah, China's definitely associated with quality. I don't think there's any competition there. But I do think that uh, I think you're spot on. I, I think uh, I, I would actually go further. I think that it's it's a fair claim to make that this is the mark of the beast as is because you need no new mark. The mark just changes to reflect that system as time goes. Right. And yeah, it might be uh, some, some triggering event that says, okay, now we're requiring it. But I think more likely it's, it's, it's just the case is so strongly made. Why wouldn't you get it in as, as babies, potentially even in the womb, why not implement it early to inst instill security for safe growth in the womb, a smoother transition for, for the actual birth process? Um, any, any and all potential dangers are cut off before they come about. 
it's this false sense of security. It's a lie is what it is. And, and the thing is that the lie might hold so much truth to it, but what it doesn't hold is the truth that it means spiritual death because it's separation from God. You no longer need God. Why would you turn to him? Uh, this occurred to me earlier that there's this cost that we have associated with all the dangers and risks that we take and healing is a magnificent thing but when the cost is cheapened we lose appreciation for the risk and we take risks and we make stupid decisions because the cost is disconnected from us uh that cost is just temporary yeah I, you know stuck my arm into a garbage truck got it chopped off obviously that's a stupid example but i made stupid decisions and now i just i just hit the undo button I, I committed a terrible crime, and I'll just go through uh, re-education through this chip. Everything's possible when you can change the psyche, when when you can further that and augment the body, replacing limbs, adding new ones. Who's to say what's the end? I, I absolutely think, as is, there's a great case to be made for this is the mark of the beast because this means the end of the need for God. And I would say anyone who believes in God, who believes that Jesus is the way, should strongly believe that the chip is not the way. Because so many times before, it's, it's been, oh, this is the mark of the beast. This is the mark of the beast. Um, you know, with the shot that you have to get to, to prevent you from catching polio or smallpox or any other host of potential infections and diseases. The case is so great that why wouldn't you, right? What's the downside? The downside is small. The upside for this is unbelievable. The upside for this is so unbelievable that you have to look at it as what are the potentials for danger, which we've, we've kicked thoroughly here. The potential is far too great to ignore. The potential for danger in this is so severe that how, how could you look past it? It's because of the temptation. This is just like original sin. That fruit that makes you like God, that chip, it gives you omniscience. It gives you the ability to heal yourself and eliminate the costs of bad things happening in your life. You could, you could be revived with full memory intact. You would never know that you died because you walked out in traffic or jumped out of a plane because your body could be repaired and your mind could be restored. If that's not robbing the image of God, robbing the experience of resurrection in Christ, uh, what is? It's a mockery and it's an imitation. Chris, you want to cross-examine or what do you think? I mean, I got Revelation 13 pulled up right in front of me and nothing about this chip fits into Revelation 13. So if you guys, Tyler especially, you believe this is actually the mark of the beast, reconcile that with Revelation 13 for me. All right, I'm going to have to read, do that. Read, read Revelation 13 for us. Yeah, read it. So I'm going to start in... <laughs> uh, I'll start in verse 16. So 13, verse 16. Also it causes all, both small and great, both rich and poor, both free and slave, to be marked on the right hand or the forehead so that no one can buy or sell unless he has the mark. That is the name of the beast or the number of its name. This calls for wisdom. Let the one who understanding calculate the number of the beast for it is the number of a man is number 666. So this specifically says be marked on the right hand or the forehead. Chip is implanted very back behind your ear. They can't get it in your forehead because your forehead is actually the thickest part of your skull. They can't really drill through that to get to your frontal cortex. Um, right hand, well, if it's in your right hand, then it's not really linked to your brain, or at least they haven't 
come up with that yet where they can stick a chip in your right hand and somehow it links to your neurons in your brain. So this is very specific about the side of the mark of the beast. Right now, mm -hmm. the chip is here. That's not where the mark of the beast is being planted. Yeah, the specificity is tough to respond to. I guess we can wait and see what the aftermath is, right? If this is going to affect your nervous system, who's to say that this thing doesn't sprawl like a virus or a spider or a squid and mm -hmm. attach to your prefrontal cortex or that it doesn't manifest in some way later in your right or left hand. Left hand would make more sense, cardio, bar, right? But who's to say? Who's to say what what could happen because of this? I guess time will tell, but you know, maybe I'm wrong. James says this is the prototype, more or less, right? This is this is kind of before, but it's tough to respond. To. It's tough to. No, I, I guess it's tough to dispute it. And that, that's why I made the claim. I said this is going to be the blueprint for potentially what could come. Um, obviously, it's new technology. They don't even know what it can do or what it can't do yet. I mean, majority of their testing has been done on animals. Uh, they just did their first human transplant a week ago. So we don't understand any of the studies. They're going to, I promise you, they're going to come up with a report saying, we found a way to make it more efficient and it's a lo different location in the body. And then they're going to uh, invest millions of dollars in how we can make it more efficient with the human body, et cetera, et cetera. So it, like I said, maybe right around the corner, this is definitely going to lay the foundation for what's to come, but, uh, but I can't argue with what you're saying, Chris Hill, cause that's, that's, that's on point as well. I'll quickly say, you know, when it comes to freedom of Christ, you know, in, in retrospect, if you see the world going a certain way, you see the world applauding a certain thing as a Christian, you should go the opposite. You should think the opposite. So if the world is applauding this thing, like this is the greatest invention of man, we should take note of that. And we should turn away from it and turn towards God, who is the knower of all truth and all things that are good. That's very that's very true. And I yeah, think man. it's it's possible because right now Elon Musk is he he was loved and adored before the Twitter purchase. Now that he's come out is a little more conservative, a little more rebellious against the establishment. People are kind of like, oh, I don't really like him. But the one thing we know that can for a man to ac acquire human acclaim and praise is that's to the ability to heal. If you can feed people and you can heal people, they don't care who you are; they will love you. I don't care if you're, I, I don't care if you're one of the infamous uh, tyrants of the past. I don't want to say their names for YouTube, but you could be one of them. If you have the ability to heal and feed people, you'll be lauded as a hero of our time. Um, so let's say this Elon Musk thing is successful, and they're telling people, hey, we're restoring limbs. We'll test it out in the military first, and you have everybody saying it works. We'll test it out in some um, veterans clinics. We'll test it out with the impoverished, and they're all coming back and saying it's a success rate. Oh, boy. But I can, I'll leave it there. I'll leave it there because it's still so early. This is still so early. <laughs>